Hi, I'm Matt from HockeyReviews.ca and this is the Sherwood Wrecker Element 1 and Element Pro Glove Snapshot Review. This is the newest line of Sherwood gear that is out. I covered the Code 5 in the past, was a fan of it and thought it was a great, especially for the price, glove. Now we have these ones which are pretty interesting, so we're going to go over these. I'm not going to do separate videos on these because they're honestly pretty similar, and that way we can just do the comparison of these as well and just an overall snapshot review. We'll also have the hands, as you can see right here, for the 3D hand test, so we'll check that out. But before all that, if you're in the United States or Canada and you're looking to buy hockey equipment, check out the links in the description to Pure Hockey and if you're in the U.S. and Hockey Supremacy if you're in Canada. Clicking that link, making a purchase, gives me a kickback help support the channel so I can make content and doing real reviews with real tests. Otherwise, if you want to support the channel, check out the links in the description to Patreon and buy me a coffee. Everything through there comes right back into the channel again, so I can keep making more content and doing real reviews. Now, I was a huge fan of the Wrecker M90, I think it was, the previous Wrecker gloves, which honestly feels like a pretty big departure from these. And you can see it up in the top right over there. I'll link it right there. I was a huge fan of that glove, especially for the price. This one is going more the code direction and less of what old Sherwood gloves basically direction was. The BPM uh, 150s were excellent gloves as well. The Wrecker, I think they were EK60s or whatever it was, were excellent gloves as well. This is slightly, it feels like it's more of the code line. So it's kind of a deviation of what they were doing in the past, but it's still an interesting glove. And by all means, we are going to go over all of it. So both of these gloves offer pretty solid value right off the get-go. Uh, the Pro is $150 and the Element 1 is $179, that's in Canadian. So that's a pretty good price compared to like the new Warrior are $250 Canadian. And these are trying to kind of compete with that same level. They're offering a ton of features. Pretty nice palm AX suede on this one. We'll get to that in a bit. So the price for these is definitely a solid, solid value compared to what other things are out there. So both of these gloves offer basically pro level nylons all the way through and the Element 1 has this interesting like rubber texture on it right there. There's a logo in there that I'll talk about it later. But these ones are basically what like you'd expect the NHL type of glove to be. Great materials all around. This one, again, very similar but with some little accents on it as you can see there just to make it stand out a little bit more and some interesting texture there where this one is just like a screen logo. Besides that, these gloves are very similar but they also deviate based on like the foams that are used, sort of, uh, and some of the features. So the thumb design on this is slightly new, and but it's the same on all of these. It's basically a three-piece design. You have that one piece right there that flexes, but this part ends up flexing too, so it kind of acts as like a three-piece hinge, as you can see. And the difference between this one, which was really just a, a two-piece design, because it's kind of the same because it's just hidden back here, how that like extra piece flexes, but it just looks like a two piece design. But there was a huge protection issue right here where basically if you go like this, you could feel that jamming in your thumb. Happy to say it's been fixed a little bit. So if your hand's down here, you don't feel that at all. When your hand is kind of on an angle coming like this, so say if you're holding a stick out like this, you can feel it more and you can feel just like the edge of the plastic of the shell of the, the thumb itself kind of dig into right here but it is considerably padded more right here than what was on the code five. And if you pull this out, you still can see like right in there where that thumb piece ends and it, it kind of sticks out a little bit, but the padding is better and it, this design is overall just better than what was on the code five. So it's nice to see them improve on that, but same exact design on both of these. Backhand and fingers, everything is the exact same. As you can see, the brakes are all the same, everything like that. Same with the exterior with the pinky brakes, which are a pretty solid design, as well as right here. The pinky one does have a plastic insert where the code didn't. Code was separated there, plastic insert, plastic insert. And that is on both of these, so it is really solid for that. And to continue on the protection part, the code was an interesting glove because it had this Velcro, so you could change the cuff size of this and adjust how you wanted. Well, that comes back into not the Element Pro, but the Element 1 where instead of Velcro, it actually has these little snaps. So unsnap, unsnap, unsnap. And now you have a flex cuff, but it doesn't really flex because this piece doesn't really stick to it. As you can see, it's not attached to it, which is fine because it does allow for really good dexterity like that. Unlike those, some of the gloves recently, like the Warriors. 
and it just kind of lets it stick up higher than what you normally would see. But honestly, even with it undone like this, it doesn't do a ton to, like if you do the lowest one, you still get more, but you do get a little bit extra height on it like that compared to just the standard pro, which doesn't have that adjustment. You can kind of see it right there. It's a little smaller. So you get a little bit more height on this. The interesting thing about these gloves is a couple companies have done videos, ice warehouse specifically of these that are clearly prototypes and they're prototypes. So you can see some different things on the palm, but you can also see different things on how this is. These parts on those prototypes, I believe are Velcroable, so you can change it where it's not Velcro on here. So it's a little different. Code obviously had that Velcro piece, but they took it out here. And I'm kind of happy with that because this would get stuck on jerseys a bit for me. And I just kind of was never happy with the position of it. This works, I think, a, a lot better in that sense. You can also see how much open that cuff is because of this kind of customization. But if you go a, the short cuff, as you can see, so this is, you can basically do your own Russian spec. And if you don't know what that is, you gotta follow me on Instagram because I talk about it all the time. But this gives you your own kind of Russian spec and short spec cuff without actually having to cut anything. So you still get like the cuff, what you want. And look how tiny that is now compared to the Pro, which is the normal height. And look at that. That's a nice, basically a negative cuff right there. So if you don't want that height and it doesn't get in the way at all, and it's a really, awesome little piece and touch right there to allow that customization just to give you a little bit more room to move and that one piece that does stick up does flex pretty good and move pretty good so it doesn't really get in the way at all and when you do that when you put it closer it's a little harder to do because it this part's attached but you do get a little more coverage of this piece right here and this cuff right here so if you do that you can still definitely feel it because of that elastic piece but that's better than if you went full cuff out and when we look at the element pro you can see still has that elastic so that you can feel everything through the cuff there because there's honestly not enough padding behind that cuff just goes right into your wrist it's kind of interesting because this does have a pretty decent foam package it feels like it's multi-density layers on the cuff itself but it also has a plastic insert right there but without really any padding on the back and with this just spandex, it does just transfer right into your cuff. So it's kind of disappointing. Also, there's no reason to have spandex here. And you can see because the cuff isn't connected down here like those warriors and you can see how open this is, which is fine, but the spandex you don't need because it doesn't actually flex with your wrist. So this could have just been this material all the way down here to give you extra padding and protection. And that would have been better than what this is. But the spandex isn't needed whatsoever on this because the flex cuff doesn't really work and do anything so it's kind of useless it is useless and that flex like spandex is just lowering protection so that's kind of disappointing in that sense moving on to the palms you do have ax suede palm as you can see right there with the logo on the element one compared to this not just ivory nash on the element pro and again there's a weird naming thing where the pro is actually a step down but like everyone else is now the pros the top it's weird same as the ax suede on the code five and this AX suede is so soft, so comfortable. I love this palm, it feels so good. The thing is, this is another thing that Sherwood did here and I kind of called it out with this, but I'm gonna call it out with this because it's to like a whole another level. There's no reason to have these stupid texture details and they're on both, as you can see. There's just less of it on the actual Pro than it is on the Element 1. This is totally useless. You don't need this stamp detail at all, get rid of it. And on here, it's not even stamped, it's actually just printed on. So again, why are you printing on details on the fingertips? Just let it be AX suede. AX suede is a great material. It's super soft, it's super comfortable, it's also on the thumb. And this makes it like less grippy because it is a printed on material. You don't need that, you don't need this here. Keep the Sherwood if you want the branding, whatever that's fine, but the rest of it, get rid of it. These little SW logos or the Sherwood logo, what these are supposed to be, as you can see compared to there. Get rid of it. It's a weird texture thing. You don't need it at all. It's useless on this glove. Leave the palm to be and don't go crazy with this. This is obviously an extra layer for durability so the palms don't wear out as fast. And on the old one, you can see it was right here and on the really corners, but the rest was a single layer. Just get rid of this texture, please. This isn't needed at all. Come on. Also, an interesting piece is this little spandex. It's kind of spandex. It's a grid, but it stretches on the outside of the hand and you can really feel it when you're opening up like this. It actually does make a difference. This is kind of similar to what Bauer did with their spandex across the hand on here, I think on the 2S glove. Anyways, it basically just allows a glove to flex a little bit more. 
and I'll put these two on side by side to kind of show the difference on it. It just allows the glove to flex a little bit more and move a little bit more with your hand and feel a little bit more broken in than what just a straight up palm does. It doesn't make a huge, huge difference or anything. It's not crazy. I hope that doesn't rip on stuff. I mean, there is enough stitching around here that even if that did rip, hopefully everything would kind of stay in place where it should. But it's a little concerning from a wear standpoint, but it feels actually really nice in your hands. It feels comfortable and is a fine design. But these do have those spandex gussets. So you can see how far my finger can go out here and how it flexes a lot. So these gloves, you wanna make sure that you get the right size because if you don't, if you get a little smaller like what these are, your fingers are really gonna blast past that padding because it is a spandex gusset and not like a Nash. Both of them are spandex, same material. So these gloves are very similar in that regards. For the grip test, we're going back to the Bauer Geo for the grip, so it's consistent. And it feels grippy, but it doesn't feel like overly sticky or anything. Just honestly, just feels like a sander palm. The Nash is comfortable. The weird thing is you can kind of feel like, it feels like a different texture on the fingertips, but it doesn't feel good. It just kind of feels like it's almost more crunchy than what you would expect on a Nash. Uh, you can't feel those grooves, at least I can't feel those grooves going like that. This is the top layer, right? So there is a layer underneath that's totally flat. So I can't feel that translating onto the stick at all, which is kind of my point of how useless that is. And But you can definitely feel this part moving a lot when you're actually holding it and everything, but feels fine, feels comfortable, moves as you would expect. And we go to the Nash Ivory, and this one feels a little bit less grippy but it's again, fine. It feels like a pro style palm. Still don't feel any of those details at all right here. Like I mentioned on the other one, this one just does feel a little bit less grippy than the AX suede. The AX suede just is a little bit softer, but this palm is fine and an easy, easy to recommend as well. The dexterity and mobility of these gloves, both of these gloves are excellent. The finger breaks really do allow your pinky to thumb touch really easy. You can see where it breaks in there without really exposing any gaps. A little bit there, but not much. And that piece on the side, just like on the Cadillac 9X, kind of a little small, uh, bigger on this one, but it does a good job of bending with your hand, as you can see. And when you do that whole hand test, you can really see, or hand closure, you can really see how it all closes like that and does a good job there. So really good dexterity on there, three piece index fingers and middle finger, only two piece on the ring. And you can stick your finger in there and you can kind of touch your hand, but it's hard for that to actually do anything because you do have that other block kind of getting in the way. So no complaints there. The design there is all pretty solid all the way through. So Sherwood does his credit on that and it's gonna be the exact same on the Pro as well as on the One. Another solid piece on this glove and for dexterity and mobility is the cuff design over here. So you can see how these are sloped and this is pretty common now. A lot of companies are doing this and it does just slide over really easily. So the one thing I did notice of the record that's kind of unique, even the code, the thumb kind of really bends back. As you can see, the hyper extension protection is not good. Usually this goes a little higher and you can see it just bending out, but at least it doesn't really dig into you. For this one, it's, I can feel this plastic piece basically right here, going right into basically right here and, or actually about right there. And it's not comfortable at all. So that hyper extension protection is not very good and doesn't work that well. So that's kind of disappointing that they fix one thing, but then the hyper extension part is not very good on the other thing. The one thing I do want to say about this cuff one more time is while I appreciate that it does have that ability for adjustability to go up and down, they definitely did sacrifice some protection on this because of this spandex on here. So it's kind of disappointing in that sense. But if you want a smaller cuff without cutting things, this is definitely an pretty easy option to go. I don't know how well these snaps are gonna hold up as you can see how they are and you can see how they are. I don't know if these will hold up that well it, from getting cold, from getting whacked and stuff. Hopefully they hold up. I mean, if they didn't, it's not a huge deal cause you can just leave it loose anyways, but just one area of concern for me. They also fixed the liner on, and this is again, their COP R29. So it uses copper infused uh, threads to kill, to be antibacterial. I want to make sure I got that right. Same kind of ideas on this one. This one was just a little crazier, but this one's split. As you can see the material like ripping apart there. This one does not, that doesn't happen anywhere. And the easy way to test this is to pull and see if you can pull apart at the seams and it doesn't, it doesn't pull at all. It stays pretty good and everything. Comfortable material feels really good. I love their unique design on it. It feels kind of cool. Softer than what is on this one. That's for sure. So it's definitely done a little differently and I'm a huge fan of Kind of what that is and finally we get to one of the interesting parts about this and this is this viconic 
VIP. So I think that's Viconic Impact Protection what VIP stands for. It is not on the Pro. So what this is, is when we pull the liner out, you can just see you have a traditional liner right here. Nothing special in there, everything is fine. Now, when you pull the liner out of this one, you do not have something that is traditional and everything normal. So this is the Viconic VIP system. They are using it in their entire protective line for the Element One. This stuff is used according to Viconic and Sherwood in automotive practices. So it's using car doors to dampen impacts, also using used on military applications. So they brought it to the hockey world for impact dispersion. And does it work? I don't know. They say it works in their tests and everything. My testing, honestly, this one felt worse for comfort than this one did when you when it hit the backhand because I felt like you could kind of feel these pods a bit more. With that said, if a puck hit this, would this feel better than what this one would? Maybe, maybe it would be more protective so there'd be less damage on you, but it wasn't necessarily more comfortable when I did the mini stick test on the back of these. In fact, that one was a solid feeling. This one, mm, and my issue with these is I like the idea and everything. These are little plastic things, so they compress, as you can see, and they kind of pop up. They're supposed to pop up back to their shape, but you can see you compress them and they kind of stay there. Maybe eventually they'll pop up. So again, my problem with these in a hockey application is a few things. One, it's cold. And this was a problem with Poron and also D3O. If it's cold, it hardens and freezes. This is a plastic. So whether they say this isn't plastic, this is basically a plastic, I'm gonna call it a plastic. Plastic will get harder when it cools and it's cold in a rink. So these, if they compress now, that's fine. What happens when they get frozen by sitting out in a car or something and then this impact? Do they compress anymore like this or do they stay hard and then it's just plastic kind of hitting the back of your hand. You also could feel the little bumps on your hand when the impact was through. It didn't feel like it was one whole thing all the way through. The other thing with these is in their application that they showed for cars, these were massive, like this big of cone that would take an impact and disperse it. These, I feel like it's just more going into your hand more and it's not as great because it's like, I can feel these tips and you shouldn't be able to feel tips. It should just feel distributed across the whole thing. So maybe this foam piece underneath isn't big enough and maybe this has to be like further out in the shell, like underneath, but it isn't. And it's right here. So the, the, the only part stopping these, right, is basically this, this liner is the only thing between your hand and these. And I could just feel these little bumps on it when the pressure came down, so it was kind of disappointing. Obviously, when you flip this over, all these bumps are pointing out. So they're pointing up here, so it's supposed to take it that way, but you still felt those bumps on your backhand. And yeah, the other problem with this is Sherwood needs to sew more of this on. So you can see right here how there's stitching right here holding this in place. But then you can also see this glue. You can see how all this has popped off. It's stitched down there. So obviously this glue isn't holding this in place right. And you can see the sides, this side right here has started to peel up a bit and like fold itself over like that. I haven't done ton tests with this and to do this, this is basically off the shelf. I've done one hand test on it and that's it. And that's what's happening to this already. So that's pretty disappointing. It's gonna stay in there because of the stitching, but should be stitched all the way around the outside or at least use something better than this. Or what they could do, I'm sure they don't want to because they wanna show it off. This should be on the inside of a liner. So you can do like extra padding too, right? If it was on the inside, just have the Viconic there and then have the liner on both sides so you get a little bit more dampening. Interesting idea. I like them trying new things. I don't know if this entire process was the best way to implement it. I think they could have done some things a little better there but it's not bad and it's definitely something cool and out there. I don't think it will really sell that many gloves though, especially I don't know how many kids are gonna be in the market if they wanna see that, but hey, it's there and it's kind of interesting. On to the rest of the protection test. So I had a pair of Sherwood gloves last year that were pro stock gloves. Show them up there that you couldn't buy. Can get them some places now. I'm not sure what the foam package is on them. With that said, this foam package is an upgrade over what was on the Code 5. And the Code 5 had like a soft foam, a medium density foam, and then a plastic piece. This one kind of takes it to the next level. You have that softer foam, you have a much, much denser foam. So this kind of top layer of foam feels like it was what was on the Pro Sock ones. I just think those Code Pro Socks were a bit thicker than what this is. This is a pretty thin application of this foam compared to from what I remember, but 
I don't have it on me and I can't check, so don't quote me on that. And the plastic insert in the top. So protection on these is definitely better than it was on the code. So it's definitely a solid upgrade in that sense. And both of these have the exact same foam protection. So again, this one being like $20 cheaper or $150 Canadian versus 180, I think that's 30. Great value here because you're getting everything basically but this Viconic and these little changes and you're getting a solid glove. So I want to call that out. But foam package is pretty good on there and I would be totally happy wearing this glove for this part. I wish there was more in here, but that's it. The other part about these gloves, I mentioned the index finger and padding was all pretty good. Same with the pinky finger and you have upgrade here, which is plastic compared to just a foam on the code, which is a nice change. And it's the same on both of these. Now on to the 3D hand test. So we've done this one before and it definitely fits like true to size 14, even maybe a little bit smaller than a normal 14. So we're gonna go with the big hand first, put it in the right. And this goes for both of these gloves. They both fit the exact same. So there's no reason to do this test kind of twice on gloves. On these gloves, it's all the same. They fit the way that they do. And we put the hand in there. So we have the big hand. And you can see the tips are coming past the end, as you can see right there and right there. It's coming past the end. So there's a 3D hand fit test right there. And the index finger is right there. So that's all coming past the end. And that's just in this hand position. So definitely legit 14s on this, even a little bit on the low side, smaller side, but legitimate 14s. And then when we put the smaller hand into this glove, we get the same thing where you can see the finger isn't going quite past the blocks, not past the blocks, just on the inside and on the inside. So a legit 14 fits true to size on that. And the bigger hand is definitely coming out the edges, as you can see. When I wear these gloves, and it is the same with the code, uh, I can definitely feel my fingers doing this all the time. And even when relaxed and stuff, I still feel my fingers pass there. So it's not like I have to jam my hands and be like, oh, look how far it is. Even my hand relaxed in there, it's still coming past there. And these are 14. So I definitely go 15. They're true to size in that sense. So Sherwood says that these are, I think, a tapered fit or something. But the fit on these honestly feels tighter in the backhand and basically all right here. And the fingers, it feels pretty similar to this. So it's pretty snug. And this one definitely feels looser back here. And like the cuff, this feels a little bit tighter, but it's not a, like a big difference. This one definitely feels looser overall than what that one does. While they both shook off at like the same idea, this one definitely feels looser overall than what this glove is. So I would definitely say this one's a bit looser and the record is a bit tighter, which kind of followed with what the record did in the past. The record was always a pretty tight fitting glove. And that's the same here, at least for the 14s. I'm not sure how different the 15s would feel on this, but again, this one is a little bit looser feeling than what this is. Overall, Sherwood has made a pretty solid glove here with the Element 1 and Element Pro. You get solid foam package on the backhand, pretty interesting liner on this one. Just really standard, simple, but solid done. The nylons and everything are like pro nylons, everything on here. Palms really nice on both of these. A little bit too much on the palm, but it's a minor thing. Overall, easy recommend, especially at their price point. $150 Canadian for these is a solid seal. I don't think I would go up to this one. I think I like this glove overall a little bit better just because the palm, well, I like the AX suede. It's just, I don't know, like the details on the fingertips kind of irk me and I don't like that liner part as much as what this one was. But this is a solid glove for the price and I definitely recommend people check them out if that's in your ballpark. Pretty solid overall and decent job by Sherwood. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully it was helpful. If it was helpful and you thought this was like pretty awesome video or whatever, please reach out to Sherwood on social media. Let them know. Gets me on the radar. They were nice enough to send me a bunch of code stuff. I didn't get any of this stuff. I borrowed it from a store, bought and returned from a store just so I could do these videos because I thought these gloves were pretty awesome and pretty interesting and they should be talked about. So here we are. So thank you very much for watching. Remember to subscribe to me on YouTube, follow me on Instagram, Twitter. Links are in the description. If you're purchasing any hockey equipment and want to support the channel, check out the links in the description to Hockey Supremacy if you're in Canada and Pure Hockey if you're in the United States. Click in those links, making a purchase gives me a kickback. That way it helps support the channel so I can make more content and doing real reviews. Would love to shoot bony puck machine at this thing, but I can't because they're not mine. I have to take them back. The more things I buy to actually do real tests means the reviews are more in depth and more useful. If you want to support the channel otherwise, check out links to Patreon, buy me a coffee. Greatly appreciate it. I have to buy gear to do reviews on stuff like sticks. People keep asking me to get more CCM sticks. I can't because I have to buy them outright and that's really expensive and I can't afford to do that every single year for CCM when they come out with three sticks a year. Thank you very much for watching and take it easy. You're watching hockeyreviews.ca.